You've packed your bags, your motorcycle is ready for the long haul. It is time to get you ready. We are going to share with you what you need to know to plan for the trip, the documents needed, and the insurance paperwork required to have a peace of mind while enjoying the touring experience. Once again, this series has been brought to you by Direct Asia. Hey bro, what are you doing? Protecting my investment la. You never know when you get into accident what? No bro, not like this la. If you want to get yourself covered, go with Direct Asia. They are the only motor insurance company offering 30% NCD after holding your NCD 20 for 2 years with an NCD protector plus optional benefit. 30%? Then if my friend want to ride the bike, how? Get the Any Rider optional benefit. Direct Asia will protect the unnamed rider that you authorize. Also, if you mess up your bike, you can send your machine to any workshop of your choice. For more information, check out Direct Asia's website. Links in the description below. Terms and conditions apply. From my experience, the best trips are unplanned trips. But that doesn't mean I don't plan anything. The trick is to plan the trip based on one important thing. To enjoy the ride. Yeah, and most bikers will tell you it's not about the destination, it's about the journey, and we can't agree more. Usually, with detailed plans, unless you account for delays, chances are you'll end up rushing to meet waypoints, and that's kind of like the last thing you want to do on any ride. It's very dangerous. What we like to do is to have a rough idea planned out with plenty of leeway for change. I plan my route, the places I want to go to, but I don't book my accommodation. This gives me the freedom to change my plans as and when I want and stay at places I find interesting along the way. Actually Mark, I've never planned for a long tour. Mm. The furthest I rode to is maybe Dizaru and that was completely unplanned. Thankfully, nothing happened. Say I want to go to South Thailand, how will I even start planning? Right off the bat, I'd recommend going with an experienced rider that understands your limitations. For example, if you were to ride with me, I'd do a stop in KL for the night, have a few beers and chill for that night. The next day, maybe ride to Penang and take the new bridge. Solid views. Mm. But if I have limited time off from work, should I just push myself past my limits and just get to Hat Yai? Because that's where I want to go, right? Oh, hell no! Never push past your limits. If you don't have enough time, then we'll just plan to go somewhere else nearer. Hat Yai will always be there. The idea is to enjoy the ride, not suffer the ride. It is completely okay if you don't achieve your destination in your first attempt brings me back to why I don't book my accommodation ahead of time. Change will happen. I see. Well, so I should set my goals and communicate with my group before we even start. So like, how will I know if I'm getting to my limits? Well, this kind of thing should be communicated during the planning of the trip, not on the day of the start of the ride. Riders or drivers will generally have telltale signs when they're losing focus. Take me for example. I tend to struggle to hold my line. Stop riding the moment you feel you're losing focus or at the very most, stop at the next available stop. This is the time where most riders and drivers get into trouble. Hmm. Well, so if my goal is to ride around the destination, it seems like the best and safest way for me would be to fly there, rent a bike, different goals, different trips I guess. What else do I need? Like we mentioned in the first episode of the series, passport, lock card, but let's not forget one of the most important things for any riding trip, your vehicle insurance coverage. Did you know that Direct Asia has policies that covers you and your machine all the way to Southern Thailand? Pretty cool. Hmm? What's cooler is that 30% NCD. Links in the description below. My impression has always been that every country needs a new insurance. I never bothered to find out when I went to JB until I low-sided there. Only then did I realise that I needed to check my policies and coverage in different countries, but I never knew that there's coverage for like multiple countries. Yeah, always check your policy documents and make sure that you and your vehicle are covered for wherever you plan to go. For example, if you're... <coughs> <laughs> for
For example, if you're planning a trip all the way to the north of Thailand, which is out of policy coverage, you'll need to get another insurance policy that covers that area. Most people will buy the basic policy, but that covers only the third party. That means that person you hit and not you or your machine. We strongly recommend that you buy the upgraded policy. That one covers you and your machine. The devil is in the details. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I've learned my lesson the hard way. And I just get the most comprehensive coverage wherever I am. That way, I would never get caught with my pants down. <laughs> At least not when I don't want to. <laughs> We buy our Thai insurance from a place in Kedah. Bruh, Thai insurance. <laughs> we buy our Thai insurance from a place in Kedah. For those of you who need the coordinates, they're in the description. Keep in mind that having an insurance policy for your motorcycle is required by law in most countries. Mm -hmm. Well, when I travel, one of the most important things for me is my travel insurance. That way I know I'm covered for hospitalization, medical evacuation, and repatriation. Touch wood. Choi, 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 touch wood, touch wood. <laughs> well, if anything serious happens and I need medical evacuation, I wouldn't be able to afford the cost to charter an emergency helicopter to fly me to a hospital, let alone a medical plane back to Singapore for specialized treatment. Oh yeah. Those bills will run into the tens of thousands of dollars. More if you require critical care. Travel insurance is not compulsory. But you judge what's more important, paying a small fee for travel insurance or paying through your ass to get back home. Finally, mental health is the most important defense of a rider. He or she will not be thinking straight if they aren't in the right headspace. A rider cannot afford to be distracted by their struggles when traveling at high speeds. If you are a rider that thinks a lot while on the road, be sure to take the back roads and travel at a much slower pace. In case something happens, you're not travelling at high speeds. Mm -hmm. Never be afraid or ashamed to reach out for help, be it professionally or from your fellow riders. After all, on the road, all riding khakis got to take care of each other. Remember that reaching out for help doesn't mean you're crazy or you're mad. Sometimes we just need a different perspective or listening ear. We'd really love to hear your experiences and stories on the road. No matter if you're in Singapore or somewhere in the rest of the world. Tell us your stories and share some tips in the comments. Check out our 333 merchandise at our 333 store. We hope you like, share and subscribe. With that, I'm Mark. And I'm Jake. And we'll, we'll see you on the road. road.